Great Scenes from Great Plays, with your host, Walter Hamden, and starring tonight, Mr. Raymond Massey, in The Devil and Daniel Webster. On behalf of the families of the Protestant Episcopal Church in your own community and the Episcopal Actors Guild, we welcome you to another half hour of great scenes from great plays, transcribed by famous artists of stage, screen, and radio. And now I present your host, the distinguished actor-manager, Mr. Walter Hampton. Thank you, and good evening. Tonight we offer you a dramatization of Stephen Vincent Benet's famous story, The Devil and Daniel Webster. Webster was an orator of gigantic reputation. His senatorial debates with Henry Clay are a thundering chapter in our history. But in this evening's play, we find the great man involved in an uncanny debate of a far different order. And I'm privileged to present as our guest tonight the distinguished star of stage and screen, Mr. Raymond Massey. Thank you very much, Walter. As a member of the Episcopal Actors Guild, I'm happy to be here. This is an appealing story, a poignant study in the American art of neighborliness. Yes, Ray, and that neighborliness you speak of, it's not a lost art, as some insist, is it? Not even in our complicated world today. Well, perhaps tonight's play will help us to remember that. So let us raise the curtain now on The Devil and Daniel Webster, adapted for radio by Philo Higley, and starring Raymond Massey as Daniel Webster. <laughs> Jabez Stone was a prosperous young farmer in New Hampshire. A hundred years ago tonight, there was festivity and dancing in the great main room of his fine new farmhouse, for well, Jabez had just married pretty Mary Squires. <laughs> right fine wedding. Handsome couple, I'll say. Yeah. Get me a and There they are now. Jabez and Mary coming in to dance. Handsome steppers, too. Not time yet. Oh, you know, Mary's a lucky girl. Davis brings her plenty of this world's goods, too. Wonder where he got it all. Stones was always poor. Mm, ain't poor now. Doesn't make you wonder just a mite. <laughs> Where's the pop and fancy, fiddler? Oh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute, neighbor. Let's hear from the happy pair. Davis! Davis Stone, speak up. Yay! Let's hear from the brand new state senator. Uh, last time he'll get the last word. <laughs> Neighbors, friends, I'm not much of a speaker. I I just want to say we're mighty glad to have you here tonight, Mary and me. We want to thank you for coming. And... Hooray! Vote the Whig ticket! Hooray for Daniel Webster! <laughs> I'm glad High Foster said that, but that's how I feel, too. We're lucky folks to have a neighbor who's a great man in America. Daniel Webster promised he was going to honor us tonight. Yay! He ought to be here any minute. <laughs> Hooray for Daniel, the biggest man in the whole USA today. And when he comes, I know we'll all give him a real New Hampshire welcome. Yeah. Now come and get the cider, friends. Yeah. Mary? Yes, David? I lost sight of you there for a minute. My husband? That's a big word, husband. It's a good word. Happy, Mary? Oh, yes. So happy, I'm afraid. Afraid? I suppose it happens to every girl just for a minute. It's like spring getting to be summer. Oh, you want it to be summer, but the spring was sweet. Oh, Jabez, I'm so proud of you. A man can't always be proud of everything, Mary, when, when he has his way to make. You've got to remember, Mary, whatever happens, it was all for you. Oh. I don't think anything is going to happen. If it was, it'd have come first thing this morning. And he hasn't come, but... But, Jabez, Jabez, dear, I think it's wonderful that Mr. Webster's coming. I wasn't thinking about Mr. Webster. 
Mary, there's something I just have to tell you. I should have before, but I... Somehow I... so pale, Javis. What is it? Everything's all right now, Mary. I'm sure it is, so I can tell you. Now, you see, five years ago... <laughs> I'll tell you later, Mary. Channel! Channel Webster! Yeah, Channel! Here he is, Davis. Old friends, it does be good to hear you. But don't cheer me. I'm not running for president this summer. <laughs> Davis Stone, not me. Davis Stone and his lovely bride. We're proud of... What's that? Tarnation, the busted the fiddle string. Excuse me. Go ahead, Mr. Webster. Don't lay no lies at... We're proud of Javis Stone in these parts. We know what he's done. Started out with a patch of land that was mostly rocks and mortgages, and now look at him. His land's rich, his house rebuilt. A legislator of this great state. Eh? Well, don't mind Isaac, Daniel. Well, I didn't come here to make speeches anyhow. I came to kiss the bride. <laughs> May I, Javis? <laughs> 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 I'm proud to welcome you to my new home, sir. Congratulations, Jabez. You're a man favored by fortune. And now if our friend in the corner will give us a tune on his fiddle... Don't take it. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Webster, but the, the very devil's got into this fiddle. I, I'm trying to oblige you. Perhaps you need some rosin. On your bow, fiddler. Who's that? He came in through the crowd. Maybe I do and maybe I don't, but... Hey, who are you? I don't recollect seeing you around here before. Oh, I'm just a friend. A humble friend of the bridegroom. Davis, what's wrong? It's Mr. Scratch. He did come. I'm afraid I came in the wrong way, Mr. Stone. You've improved the place so much since I last saw you, I hardly recognize the new front door. I came as fast as I could to offer my congratulations. Mary, Mr. Webster, this is a friend from Boston. A legal friend. Yeah, Boston lawyer. You might say so. Yeah, I've there. been playing that fiddle for 30 years at weddings. And now comes a Boston stranger to tell me how to do it. But my good friend. Don't good friend me. Need rosin, indeed. Play it yourself, why don't you? Well, thank you, sir. That might be interesting. Uh, shall I, Mr. Stone? I... Why, I... Jabez, are you ill? No, no, but I... It's so hard. I've got the medicine for Jabez, Mrs. Stone. Ten-year-old Medford rum, my boy. I brought you this jug from home. No, no. Mary, Mr. Webster, I must tell you, I must... I'll let him play. He's bound to, don't you see? There's nothing we can do. <laughs> capital, Mr. Stone, capital. <laughs> mm, but I'm afraid this instrument needs special tuning. I told you so, didn't I? Tonight the devil's got in that fiddle. Ah, indeed. There, there. That's much better, much better. And now in tribute to the bride and groom, I'll play a song of sentiment of young hopes and of young defeat. Jabez, Mr. Webster, stop him. Did I hear someone ask if the tune had a name? Well, let's call it. Are you ready, J.B. Stone? What do you want here, anyhow? Is this creature really a friend of yours, Jabez? If not, he should be shown the door. Mr. Webster, I... You're very impolite, Mr. Webster. Perhaps you should ask Mr. Stone if I don't have a right to be here. But I insist on knowing why you came, sir. Why, well, I came for my friend, J.B. Stone, that's all. Eh? What's that? The church bell. The church bell. The, the passing bell. The funeral bell. Who's your friend in black, Jabez? Well, are you ready, J.B. Stone? Where does it get you 
your money, Jabez Stone. What is the price you paid for it, Jabez Stone? Help me, neighbors. Help me. <laughs> he stole his gold to the devil. That's what he's done. <laughs> that was the devil playing the fiddle. But, neighbors, I didn't know. I didn't mean. Gold is gold to the devil. <laughs> go. Go get out of here. I did. I sold my soul. I signed a bond. Go quickly. Save yourself. There's no help for me now. He's after us. Run. Hide. The devil. He's following us. Jabez. Jabez, is this true? Yes, Mr. Webster. It's true. My poor lad. Dear. Oh, my dear. You must hurry, Mary, with the others. But he's gone. That dreadful man's gone, dear. But he'll be back. Hurry, Mary. Go home. Back to your folks. And leave you, Jabez. You don't understand. We just made promises to each other. Mary, you've got to go. I demand it. But I... Oh, Jabez, why? How... It started years ago. I, I had such ambitions and no luck at all. I wanted to marry you and bring you to a decent place. But the farm was only stones and blight. I'd lie awake at night and try to figure out a way to get somewhere. But, Jabez, I'd have loved you just the same. I've got to try and make you understand. I was plowing one morning and the plowshare broke clean off on a rock. I didn't even have the money to get it mended. It was the last straw, Mary. Oh, my poor Jabez. Well, right then and there, I said right out loud... I'll sell my soul for two cents. <laughs> and Mary, do you know, he came along that very afternoon. Same man, Scratch. Dark dressed, soft spoken with those funny pointed shoes he wears tonight. <laughs> Drove up in a buggy. Said we had some legal business to transact. But Davis, dear. The dog took one look at him and ran away. But I was so down and discouraged. I signed his paper. Of course, I had to ask for more than two cents, Mary. Oh, Jabez, if you'd only told me. Well, almost right away, things picked up on the farm. My cows got fat. Crops turned out fine. Lightning never struck the barn. He's kept his bargain. But what am I going to do? Jabez, there must be someone who can help us. Well, a mortgage like that wouldn't hold in court. Talk to Judge Burke. We'll take a case against old Scratch. There's not a lawyer in the world to do it. Jabez! Did you say something about lawyers? Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster. You'll excuse my leaving for a moment, just having a cigar out on your porch. Jabez, I just happened to hear a little of your conversation through the open window. Sort of a law case, eh, neighbor? Well, a mortgage case, Mr. Webster. Mortgage, eh? Well, I haven't pleaded a mortgage case in years. Don't generally plead at all now, except before the Supreme Court. But you're my neighbor. If I can be of any service... Oh, Mr. Webster, will you help him? It's a terrible lot to ask, but you see, sir, there's... There's Mary. If... If you could see your way to it... I will. I've still got the Missouri Compromise to straighten out, but... I'll take the case. Oh, Mr. Webster... After all, Mrs. Stone, if two New Hampshire men aren't a match for the devil, we might as well give the state back to the Indians. <laughs> the mortgage was for a definite term of years. Five years. And it fell due today, I take it. Yes, but when he didn't show up first thing this morning, I, I thought he'd forgotten. That's why I wouldn't have the wedding till this afternoon. Thought by then I'd be safe. I didn't want to drag Mary into this. Of course, of course. Well, we've got to get you out of it, that's all. Now, tell me, Jabez, did you sign this document of your own free will? Yes, I can't deny it. Everything had gone so wrong, I was desperate. Mm, I see. Well, I fought John C. Calhoun and I fought Henry Clay. I'd fight 10,000 devils to save a New Hampshire man. How can I help, Mr. Webster? There's one way, madam, one way only, and it's hard. As Jabez counsel, I must ask you to withdraw. Oh, I can't do that. You must, my dear. Frankly, in a few minutes, this room is going to be no fit place for a lady. But I... I can't leave him. Not now. You must go, Mary. Madam, you can best help us with your prayers. Oh, I'll pray, I'll pray. Trust me, Mrs. Stone. All right, Mr. Webster. 
I'll go now, Jabez. Thank you, Mr. Webster. I couldn't have made her go. Well, now while we're waiting, uh, how about a nip of that old Medford rum? There'd be no joy in it for me tonight. Come, man, come. There's nothing like it. So an inchworm, try it once, and he stood right up on his hind legs and bit a bee. <laughs> now, if... Mr. Webster, I've just thought... What's the matter? Mr. Webster, harness your horses and get away as fast as you can. You brought me a long way, neighbor, to say you shun my company. But I see it all now. He'll want both of us. Let him take me, Mr. Webster. Whatever it is, I have to go. He mustn't get you, too. He mustn't. It's kindly thought of, neighbor. But after all, there's a jug on the table and a case in hand. And I never left a jug or a case half finished in my life. No! Easy does it, Jabez. Come in, Mr. Scratch. Attorney of record for Jabez Stone, sir. <laughs> well, well, it was quite a jolly run. Had to chase those good folk all the way to town just for the fun of it, you know, to live up to my reputation. Taxing sometimes. Yes, you do seem a trifle out of breath. Not a bit of it. Well, none of us here are as young as we might be, are we? Except Jabez here, of course. He still has a long and useful life ahead of him. Oh, I have a good many years yet, Mr. Webster. And now I shall call upon you, Mr. Webster, as a law-abiding citizen, to assist me in claiming my property. Not so fast, Mr. Scratch. Produce your evidence if you have any. The deed itself. Is that your signature, Mr. Stone? Yes. Keep quiet, Jabez. Well, come now, Mr. Scratch. We're both sensible men. Surely we can settle this little difficulty out of court. I want just one thing, the execution of my contract. Then why did you wait until the night? Until I've been married? As my client says, if this is the day on which the bond is due, why didn't you appear this morning like a decent businessman? There's nothing said in there about the hour of collection, is there? And now, if you've no further arguments to adduce, I am really rather pressed for time. You shall not have this man. Mr. Stone is an American citizen, and no American may be forced to serve a foreign prince. Uh we fought England for that in 1812. Foreign? And who says I'm a foreigner? I never yet heard of the devil claiming American citizenship. <laughs> who has better right? When the first wrong was done to the first Indian, I was there. Alas, I am merely an honest American like yourself. Then I have you. Then I stand on the Constitution. I demand a trial by jury for my client. The case is hardly a jury case, Mr. Webster. Let it be any court you choose. So long as it's an American judge and American jury. The quick or the dead, I'll abide by the issue. Quick or the dead, eh? Uh, very well, then. You asked for it. They're arriving, Mr. Webster. That American jury of yours. Can you see their faces yet? You recognize a few, at least, I'm sure. Mr. Webster, Mr. Webster, I'm scared. See? There's Benedict Arnold and Governor Dale, who broke men on the wheel. And Morton, the Merrymount, and Blackbeard Beach, the gory pirate. Traitors and renegades, every one but twelve Americans, Mr. Webster. Scratch. You must pardon the rough appearance of one or two. They've come a long, long way. A jury of the dead. Oh, the dead. And the dead. Ah! But they've all played a part in America, remember? Are you satisfied with the jury, Mr. Webster? I... Very well, Mr. Scratch. Ah. You asked for a judge, I believe. Justice Hathorn, a jurist of experience, presided at certain witch trials held in Salem, hung every last defendant of a ball. Call the first case. Call, Call the, the first, first case. case. Who appears for the plaintiff? I, Your Honor. And for the defendant? I do. He'll have little luck with this case. Your Honor, I move to dismiss this case on the grounds of improper jurisdiction. Motion denied. On the grounds of insufficient evidence. Motion denied. Motion denied. Motion denied. Motion denied. Motion denied. Motion denied. The prosecution will proceed. Your Honor, gentlemen of the jury, this is a plain, straightforward case. It need not detain us long. <laughs> I offer 
Well, that's being in evidence in market exhibit A. I object. Objection denied. I shall now call J.B. Stone to the witness stand. Yes. Call J.B. Stone. Your Honor, I move this jury be discharged for flagrant and open bias. Motion denied. Exception. Exception denied. This motion is always denied. Your Honor, I... J.B. Stone to the witness stand. J.B. Stone. J.B. Stone. J.B. Stone. You haven't got a chance of winning your case? I protest this is intimidation. This mocks all justice. The protest is irrelevant, incompetent, and immaterial. We have our own justice. The protest is denied. Did you or did you not sign this document? I signed it. You know I signed it. I have to go to perdition for it. I'll go. The prosecution rests. Remove the prisoner. But I wish to cross-examine. No cross-examination. But you may speak if you like. Be brief. Be brief. We have our own justice here. Gentlemen of the jury, I was going to defy you. I was going to thunder and roar. But suddenly I realized something. In your eyes I saw my own hate and fury, my hate of you. But hate is a weak weapon. Mercy is a stronger one, I think. The enduring weapon of forbearance. Once you were men, however long ago, and I shall speak to all of you as men. Once we were men, not now, not now. I'll speak of common things, small things, the freshness of the morning when you're young, the day's toil, the rest by the fire, the quiet sleep. These are good things, but they sicken without freedom. It was for freedom we came here in the boats and the ships. It has been always a long journey. Hard and bitter. But out of the wrong and the right, the sufferings, the strivings, there is that new thing, America. The traitors in their treachery, the wise in their wisdom, all have played a part. Even in hell you must know this. You were men once, Americans. Have you forgotten the forest? The forest. The rush of the forest. The free forest. We were men once. Have you forgotten the sea and the ships? The, the sea, sea, the blue sea, sea and, and the ships. Your Honor, I object. This attorney is unduly influencing the jury. Objection denied, Mr. Scratch. We will hear him out. We, we will hear him out. out. Now here is this man, Jabez Stone, with good and evil in his heart, like any other. Will you take the law of the oppressor and bind him down? There is sadness in being a man, but it is a proud thing, too. There is failure and despair. We are all tricked and trapped, but somehow we rise again. No demon that was ever fooled can know the inwardness of that. Only men, bewildered men. They have broken freedom with their hands and cast her out. Yet shall she live while man lives. She shall live in the blood and the heart, in the earth of this country. To you she may be long forgotten, yet each one of us has aided her somehow, even the traitors. God save the United States and her men everywhere. The defense rests. Men, men, we were free. We were free. As the jury considered its verdict, we have not guilty, Your Honor. But Your Honor, Your Honor, I demand the payment of my deed. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Yes, my boy. And it's morning. Why, even Scratch is gone. Still protesting. Mary! <laughs> yes. You know, Jabez, I think once you've bested somebody like Mr. Scratch in a fair fight, his power on you is gone forever. Mary! Mary! Is it all right? Mary, we owe everything to Mr. Webster. It was a miracle. Oh. Even the damn had to salute his eloquence. Stop it, nonsense, son. I was only being neighborly. You know, I'm kind of sorry Scratch disappeared so fast. I've got a ram named Goliath that can butt through an iron door. 
like to have turned him loose on our friend just to see what he could do. How can we ever thank you, Mr. Webster? Oh, you must be exhausted. It's been hours since you arrived. Well, now, if your sweet wife has no objections, Jabez, let's just see what's left in the jug. It's <laughs> dry work talking all night long. And by the way, I hope there's pie for breakfast. <laughs> Handen, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back in a moment to tell you about next week's play. But first, a message of importance I know you will want to hear. Sincere good neighborliness is the very essence of peace among individuals, communities, and nations. But what is being a good neighbor? It's certainly a great deal more than just surface friendliness or a detached kind of tolerance. Good neighborliness is active, helpful, based on a sincere desire to understand your neighbor and a willingness to sacrifice for him when he needs assistance. In tonight's play, Daniel Webster was willing to risk his worldly wealth and even his very soul for Jabez Stone, a man he hardly knew. Why? Because Daniel Webster considered him a neighbor and put the desperate need of Jabez before his own interests. The Christian church, more than any other one institution, has created the willingness to be neighborly among many of the peoples of the world. Today, through such movements as the World Council of Churches and at such meetings of Christians from all over the world as was held this past summer in Amsterdam, the church lays the groundwork for truly Christian neighborliness. But the church makes neighborliness real right in your own community. Millions of Americans have found and made their best friends in the worship and activities of the church. Millions know from their own experience how the church has given them the warm and comforting companionship of good neighbors, as well as the inner strength and security that comes with true faith and love of God. If you are not a member of any church, we urge you to think carefully now about discovering just how much more complete your life can be and how you, too, can find the good neighbors you need through the church. Of course, you're always welcome as a visitor at your nearest Episcopal church, and its clergyman is eager to meet and talk with you. But perhaps before such a visit, you'd like to know something about the Episcopal Church, what it is, what it stands for, and how it offers you a faith to live by in these difficult times. Now, this information is contained in an interesting little booklet called Finding Your Way. It'll be sent to you promptly if you simply write your name and address together with the words Finding Your Way on a postcard and mail it to the station to which you are listening. thank our cast, and especially you, Raymond Massey, for a splendid performance. Our music was composed and conducted by Nathan Crowell. Next week, friends, the families of the Protestant Episcopal Church in your own community and the Episcopal Actors Guild will present another transcribed play I know you're going to enjoy, a delightful old favorite, J.M. Barry's The Old Lady Shows Her Medals. Our guest will be the charming screen star, Miss Faye Bainter. I hope you will join us. Now, an invitation from the church. The Episcopal Church welcomes men and women alike to share in the opportunities for service represented by the church's wide variety of activities. There is important work to do for those less fortunate than ourselves, work that in the true spirit of the church makes better citizens of us all. So after services this Sunday, why not have a talk with your rector about it? He'll be happy and grateful to let you know how you can help.